Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to episode 29 of my FIFA 15 DC United career mode. And I see that Nikki D is actually upset with his playing time. Uh, too bad, so sad. Tell your dad, Nikki D. Oh um, man, if you guys remember, we actually just finished the MLS season, so now we're actually going into MLS Cup. Uh, now you see here, Gajess is finally happy because remember he had issues with his playing time as well. Um, and like I said here, I'm taking, uh, releasing all these youngsters that are below 93. So Cooper still looks pretty good. Marquez is out of here. Hamid's out of here. Alexander's out of here. And Savi Fernandez is out of here. Who had a promising uh, potential. But here, uh, Daniel Cooper seems to be the prize here out of all these um, American youth people that have been scouting it. It's to be expected that, you know, the U.S. doesn't uh, crack out all these potential players. So, obviously the returns are going to be few and far between. And here we finally accept the Peruvian uh, job here. And as I said uh, many times before, uh, as we see here the squad report, I was holding on on Peru because while I do want them, I want to avoid any unnecessary friendlies as that would add on to this season. And obviously... My goal is to crack three seasons before FIFA 16 comes out. And considering I'm basically dumping a big amount of videos this weekend, uh, that might be a bit of an issue. So I'm trying to uh, take these out basically as soon as possible so that I can assure uh, that you guys get three seasons out of uh, this career mode. And here we're going to start off with the national team. Gajese is number one. He's been so well for us as a backup goalkeeper, but he's going to be number one here in between the pipes for Peru. And I think I'm going to take Tapia out, and I'm going to put in... Well, I guess I'm not going to put in anyone. This Peruvian team is very lackluster at the moment. I'm hoping that once I get another scout in, or my next scouts will we'll be going to Peru so I can see if I can obtain some more new players because obviously the player pool for Peru is not going to uh, expand any more than I uh, will allow. Obviously there will be regions. I'm pretty sure Pizarro is going to retire anytime soon. So i um, sure we'll get a Pizarro, excuse me, Pizarro region. And speaking about Peru actually, I just got tickets for the Peru versus uh, US game here in DC and, and I'm very excited. I'm actually going for Peru in this one, guys. I am born in the States. I was raised uh, by my Peruvian parents, obviously. But the main reason I want Peru to win is because I am sick and tired of Klinsman. I want him out of the national team. Now, I know that's asking for a lot, but I'm hoping that at least if he uh, loses his friendly, and I'm pretty sure he's going to lose to Brazil friendly uh, following that, that he will be under some sort of hot seat. Now, the likelihood of him being fired is not realistic. Uh, they paid a lot of money for him to be here. And he does have a guaranteed contract, I, if I remember correctly. So even if uh, Sunil Gulati, the president of U.S. Soccer, decides to fire Klinsman, he's still going to be owed that heavy amount of money. So I, I don't think firing itself, unless the team goes on a horrible slump, where it jeopardizes their chances of making the World Cup. I don't foresee Klinsman being fired. Now, him losing, though, could at least force him to make a couple of tactical changes. And I know tactical and Klinsman are rarely used in the same sentence, but I'm hoping this will trigger something a la when uh, the U.S. women's national team was under that predicament when they had Rampino uh, out because of red, of a card accumulation and I'm trying to remember who else I think it was Holiday who was also basically unable to play due to uh, yellow card accumulation I think it's those two players and then uh, we started seeing the US women's national team gel a lot more better uh, when uh, uh, the coach uh, Ellis I believe is her name made the correct changes the changes that many of us fans were demanding for a while uh, once she made those changes and the team looked a lot more dangerous in all fronts and so i'm making a couple changes here for the peruvian national team i want to get in uh all the star players here obviously i want vargas i want farfan and for some reason both of them were on the bench i'm 
I would assume because of position, positional reasons. But I'm going to put him here. I'm going to keep the 4-3-3 because I think, judging by the lack of player pool and, and the lack of depth that Peru has, at least in this version of the game, the 4-3-3 would suit us well. We don't have many uh, additional midfielders that would be beneficial for the team. And we'll focus on that later. Right now, let's focus on this MLS Cup against Jesse Marsh's New York Red Bulls. Now, typically, we have been uh, doing fairly well against Red Bulls. The last game, we managed to get a tie. I'm hoping things will be different here, guys. And starting off on the right foot would be ideal. Now, I do like playing the home leg second. So, judging by uh, the rankings that we had, or the, the table, I should say, that we had, at the end of the season, I was obviously first, so I get the luxury of having the second leg be a home game for me. Now that that's out of the picture, though, we have to make sure we either put ourselves in a good spot uh, to win on the home leg, or at least put us in a spot where it won't depend too much on our production going back home. So while we would want to win... I would settle for a draw. Hopefully a 0-0 draw if, if we do get a tie. But Actually, not a 0-0 draw. Excuse me. A 1. A, a scoring draw, basically. A 1-1. One, one, a 2-2. Two, two. Something where the goals, um, the away goals, will factor into the final decision of the legs. And obviously, I'm going to start off my best starting 11 here. And apparently, Red Bulls has Vilches in the bench so I'm not sure why that's the case but uh, better for me and here we go with our first attack I the Tars to head her the ball but Kyle Rainish easily swoops there and saves the day and here we go with another counter attack Arieta the Costa Rican player is going by himself he's going with V1 versus the defender he pulls back he gets a nice ball to the spindle spindle shoots and again it's a powder puff shot no problem for Rainish there and now here on the other side for the Red Bulls Lloyd Sam with a nice footwork there going straight at it. No one's stopping him. He's all on the lonesome. And Bill Hamid with a one handed save there to keep the shutout alive. And that is the end of the first half, guys. Uh, two attacks for me, one attack for the Red Bulls. So far, it seems I have the slight edge, but not by much. Now, considering we have the second leg to worry about, and that the second leg's not coming till a week after because of these international friendlies, uh, I'm just going to keep the same starting 11. This is. This is the best team I have at the moment, and if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen with these 11 here. And Lloyd Sam, again, no one's blocking him. He takes a shot, and it's just slightly wide there, but Bill Hameen had it just in case. I don't think he would have scored, but luckily, it was off wide. And here we see a substitution here for the Red Bulls. I'm not sure who 32 is. Uh, Stoltz, Leo Stoltz, I think, the... A college kid, actually, if I'm not mistaken. The one who actually uh, threatened to go abroad if he didn't get New York as his team. And Velarde with a weird shot, but it goes in the back of the net. A very anticlimactic lead here, but this is a 1-0 lead that I'll gladly take. And let's see if we can keep it, guys. What a weird uh, circumstances, a uh, series, an unfortunate series of events, for the Red Bulls at least. Oh. But we get the lead. We get a 1-0 lead. And it, seem, it seems like Sal Sizzo is coming in for Bover. And here we go with New York. New York with Sal Sizzo, who just came in, takes the shot. What a nice, uh, easy block there by Bill Hamid. However, the ball is still in danger, in a dangerous zone. And we get a free, not free kick, excuse me, a penalty kick called against us. Again, we've been having these issues recently, especially in the last video. We actually conceded two penalty kicks in the single game. And here, I have no idea what Kitchen was thinking. And <laughs> Lloyd Sam draws the PK. Now, to score the PK, we have here number 23. And I'm trying to remember who it is. And it's Miguel Bustamante. Which is weird. Out, out of all the players for New York, Bustamante would not be my penalty taker, in my opinion. But it doesn't matter, because he converts it. And it's a 1-1 all, guys. Which is still an okay result. I really wanted the win, but if this is the way it stays, then that's fine with me. I'm going back with a one uh, away goal, which might be crucial depending on the results of the next leg. Let me see here. Uh, Vilches is clapping in excitement of his team. 
And in the last few minutes of the game, this is the last attack for the Red Bulls. Connor Lay with a nice shot, a nice center ball there. We get back in possession. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time to make a counterattack. And that's how the first leg of this MLS Cup will end. Uh, MLS Cup, excuse me, semi final. Or quarter final, I guess I should say. Never mind. Quarter final. It's a semi final conference, but it's technically it's a quarter final. It's, it's kind of confusing, guys. I, I know. Uh, I'm adding a, a lot more confusion to it. Um, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with MLS, it would be confusing. But for those of you who actually do watch it, it it should make sense to you guys. And we have here our first game uh, for the uh, World Cup qualifiers actually against Colombia. Now, I'm actually kind of worried. Um, Colombia's relatively been a good team as of late. And as I mentioned before when I was talking about Peru, um, they actually want me to go to the round of 16s of the World Cup. And that's stupid. Because Peru hasn't been in the World Cup since 1982. And to demand that, and looking at the position here, I'm in 8th place, guys. How can you ask an 8th place team in the qualifiers, how can you demand them to go into the round of 16? That's just idiotic in my opinion. But that's the hand we were dealt. And it's not like Peru doesn't have a good team, but there's no history. There's no momentum at the moment. So I'm going to have to create that out of nothing. And we see Hamas here, the beast Hamas. Who scored two monster goals this uh, this weekend against I want to say Real Betis. I did not see the game. I at least I didn't catch the whole game. I maybe caught 15 minutes of the game, but I did see the highlights and the the free kick goal was just amazing. And then you have the half the half Chilena, the half bicycle kick, if you will, uh, in the back of the net. That was just crazy, guys. He's such a beast. Um, I enjoyed his time here. Uh, his time, I, I enjoyed watching him play, I should say, in the World Cup. He was just phenomenal. And the kid's only 23. He still has a whole lot more to give. And, and it's just exciting that we'll, we might be witnessing something great here. Kind of like, you know, when Messi started off. I remember Messi back in the old FIFA games. I think it was FIFA 08 is the first time uh, we did see Messi. And he was like a 60-something overall, which was kind of crazy because uh, I remember hearing a lot of him during that season of the uh, the La Liga, and then going back on my FIFA, trying to see, you know, what's what's the deal with this kid, Messi, and in the game he was only ranked 60. He was only overall 60. That was just, it was hilarious. But it, that that thing tends to happen. I know with like uh, Genesai, another guy who um kind of uh, stood out in uh, that horrible season that uh, that horrible season that Manchester United had under um. Oh my god, I can't remember who came before Louis van Gaal. His name is escaping me, but I think he's in Espanol right now. He used to uh, he used to coach Everton. I'm just, my name, the name's just not coming to me right now, guys. But Genesai as well, um, he was a player who peaked uh, during the beginning of that season. And then when you check FIFA, uh, he wasn't uh, ranked that highly until the upgrade. And we see here that we got the first shot on Colombia, and it was nicely saved there by W. Ospina. And Velarde is going to go for the shot, and the shot's just not, there's not enough power to uh, worry the goalkeeper there. Martinez here, Jackson Martinez, I found a mistake, and not a nice, what a nice save there by Gajese to keep our uh, goal intact, actually, at the moment. So far, it's been 0 0. I want to say, though, that Colombia has been the better team so far, and granted, they do have the better players, so. It should be to be expected, and Colombia still has the ball here. The corner kick's still in play, and my defender just stupidly gives it back to the Colombia player. I don't know what was happening. I'm thinking it might be like a double agent of some sort. And Ibarbo with a nice shot, and Gallese again with a phenomenal save. Here we go with our own side of the free kick. Nothing to worry the goalkeeper there much, and that is the end of the first half, guys. As you clearly saw, Colombia has been knocking at our door for most of the first half. Is it something that's going to worry us, or can we help? Can we contain them? And in the long run, can we get them through a counterattack of sorts? And I'm going to take up Pisaro, the captain here, because he his, uh, he's very fatigued. He is at an age where his speed is not what it used to be. Granted, he was never the quickest of players. But right now, with his uh, fatigue factor hitting in, and here we have another save. Uh, I think that was Hamas with the shot. And Gajese with the save. That's three saves for Gajese right now. Three critical saves. And here we go with James Rodriguez with another kick. Gajese saves it again, guys. That's four. Four saves so far 
for Gajese. And again, Colombia. Jackson Martinez. Martinez to Falcao. Falcao with a shot. And Gajese with numbers with save number five. Gajese is being the hero right now. He's the next Superman. Forget about Raul Fernandez. He is Superman for me right now. And another dangerous corner kick. Nothing but too worrisome, but still. I want to get that thing out of there. And Arias with some nice handy footwork. Passes to Jackson Martinez. Martinez with a shot, but this time the heroics of Gajese were uncalled for. He didn't need to do much. He just uh, basically stretched his hand out there just in case. And we have a runaway here with Reynaldo Cruzado. Cruzado passes it to Jordi Reina. Jordi Reina, the Bundesliga 2 player, kicks it. And unfortunately, not enough power to where the goalkeeper, David Ospina, there. Here we go with our last counterattack. I believe Carrillo passes it to Reina. Reina all by his lonesome. Will he go? Will he go for the spectacular 1v1? He caught the defender. He's going for the shot and not enough curve to go in the net. That's two misses we've had that could have been game deciders, guys. We can't spoil these shots. We won't have many of them. I can guarantee you that. Sanchez with the last play here. Mejia. Mejia is going for no. My uh, midfielder managed to parry the ball here, and I think I'm going to get called for the foul, guys. I thought it was it was the end of the game, but no, I'm going to get yellow carded. Uh, Renato Cruzado, I believe, had a foul against that Colombian player, and it was a nasty tackle, so I think the yellow is deserved. And it seems that Sanchez might have been the player I fouled, and he seems to be tad injured. And Martinez by himself, but no, that is it, guys. That is how the game will end, 0-0, when in reality... There was only one team on the field, and that was Colombia. We were lucky enough to get a tie at home. At home, and and as you can see by this game, guys, I think it's seven saves. I just wanted to check there and see how many saves Cagliese had during that game. If this is any indication of how well the qualifiers will go, then I am in deep trouble. Because Colombia is a phenomenal team, and if I suffered uh, against them, and the fact that it was at home, where I should have had the advantage, that might be an issue here. Now we're going against another tough team here with Chile, uh, who is coached obviously by San Paoli, um, who actually coached a uh, Peruvian team at some point. I don't know if he, I don't think he was a national team coach, but I know he coached at the club level in Peru at, at some point in his career, in his managerial career, excuse me. And here we go with the rankings. So even though I tied. I went down a level, guys. I am ninth now. The only team worse than me right now is Bolivia. And I know I'm going to get Bolivians uh, pissed off here, but that's not saying much. Then again, this is where Peru is expected to be as of as of late. Um, and as of late, I mean uh, just going by the qualifiers, not going by their great performances that they had in the Copa America. Uh, where, in, where in the last two editions, they've actually managed to get their place, which, again, is surprising for me. Um, I was hoping that, at least in the previous um, Copa America that Peru had, that that was an indication that things were going to get better. Things were going to go better for the team. But, the, uh, you know, with what Sergio Marcarian did with the team um, outside the Copa America has been lackluster again. And it's always about how well the team starts, guys. Um, usually you can tell what a team uh, will be at or how their production will be, what the results will be. You kind of can pronosticate a little bit based on the first few minutes. Not for, excuse me, not first few minutes. The first couple of games here. And so if I can set the tone, if I can set the momentum here right now, then maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to pull off a miracle and have Peru qualify for a World Cup since 1982. And here we see Chile with the courts. Eduardo Vargas is such an underrated striker here. Uh, and then you have uh, Alexis Sanchez, Arturo Vidal, and then Beta Shore. It's a quality team, guys. We're playing them. And this actually is a, is a, a derby. I don't know if any of you guys are aware of it. Peru, Chile. There's a huge rivalry amongst these teams. And uh, for those of you guys who don't uh, know much about it, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I, like I said, I'm not a his historian or anything, I think it had to do with the wars. Uh, I don't remember what type, what the war was called in particular, but I know Peru was involved, Chile was involved, and Bolivia was involved. And there was some sort of war uh, where basically Peru ended up losing land to Chile. And I think that's where the rivalry 
on the soccer field kind of stems from, amongst other things, obviously, but uh, that being one of them. And a nice first shot here by Colombia. Like I said, guys, I, uh, I believe that's um, uh, Vargas with the shot. And he should have done better, guys. That that was a 1-0 lead right there. But luckily, Gajese, um did not fall in between the posts here. And here we go with Carrillo by himself. This could be the shot that we need, guys. Carrillo with a shot, and it's a goal. Chile is stunned. There is silence in the stadium as Peru takes the lead 1-0. It is so silent you can hear a pin drop. And uh, like, uh, like I was telling my father, uh, I guess breaking out from the game itself, like I was, thinking, I was talking to my father about this because um, he's obviously more knowledgeable about you know Peru's history and stuff. Uh, we were actually trying, uh, we basically came into an agreement that if Peru does not make, I mean, in real life, this is the last opportunity they have of making the World Cup, at least the best chances that they have uh, for a long run because right now the core players they have, excuse me, Vargas, Pizarro, Farfan, and Guerrero, those four strikers are the best. Or no, they're not all strikers, but those four offensive players, as we uh, narrowly avoid here a shot from Chile, those four players will be crucial for Peru's um, for Peru clinching a World Cup spot. And right now, they're all, if not most, are on the wrong side of 30. And so, if they don't make it this time, then they're gonna have to wait until the next generation, the next golden generation of Peruvian players. Uh, comes out for them to have another chance, another shot at qualifying. And here we go with this. So the youngster here tries to head the ball, and he does connect with it by a pass by Carrillo, but does not get it on frame. And again, we see here the repetition of Carrillo's goal that gives us the lead so far. And I technically, I guess I could have just edited that out. We didn't need to see it, but... Uh, I'm going to milk that goal for all I have. And here we go with Vargas with another kick here. But Gallese stands tall and blocks it right under his hand, his arm too, guys. That's two crucial saves. So far, the player that has been the most impactful has been Gallese. He's been the only player here. Um, and excuse me, not only player, but he's been the most crucial player for our team so far. And Vargas is by his lonesome, but no... Advincula gets it, and that's it through the first half, guys. We're taking a 1-0 victory, a 1-0 lead at halftime. And obviously, you can expect Chile to come out of the second half guns blazing. And I'm going to make a couple changes here. Obviously, I'm going to take out Pizarro and put in Jordi Reina. And I believe uh, I took out Vargas for Pinija. And I don't think I've ever heard of Pinija. But anyway, here we go with Andre Carrillo, the goal scorer, going for the second. He's going to cut back. He's going to go for the curve shot, but no, it goes straight to the goalkeeper, uh, which I think is Claudio Bravo, if I'm not mistaken. The Barcelona goalkeeper here. And Vargas with a service here. And a nice shot by Farfan, just not on frame. Bravo's going to put the ball back. On the field, and here we have Velarde passes it to Jordi. Jordi to Farfan. Farfan with a shot, but a calm save there by Omar Bravo or uh, Claudio Bravo, excuse me, <laughs> not the Mexican international. And here another shot saved by Bravo. And now with the counter attack for Chile, Chile with a nice save, nice while Pinilla shoots it, but no, nothing comes out of it. What a nice save by Gajese, guys! And here with Jordi Reina with his. The chance to make it 2-0. And guys, what a close one that was. And the counterattack here lastly for Chile. And I'm going to hold the ball like a little bitch. I'm going to waste time here, guys. And just to secure the 1-0 win that we just got after the whistle has been blown. And what a big three points we're taking back. The Chileans are obviously not happy. And here I'm going to check. I guess it was six saves, guys. Seven games. Excuse me. Seven saves against Colombia. Six saves against Chile. If anyone uh, should not get injured, that would be Gallese. Because my backup goalkeeper, I'm not so sure of. Well, Fernandez, I guess, won't be too much of a downgrade. 
but I'd rather have the hot hand right now, and that's Gajesu. And here we uh, prepare ourselves for the last game of this video, which is the second leg of the Red Bulls game. And if you guys remember now, recently, uh, we've managed to draw the last few games. We cannot draw again. It will irritate me. Although, we would go through with a 0-0 zero, zero draw. So, technically, that's all we need. However, I want the win, guys. I need the win. I need some momentum, and so far, of the last few games that I've been playing here, uh, haven't been up to temp, have to, haven't up to par. Excuse me, and we see Columbus Crew, uh, and Portland Timbers seems to have the lead here, and Ross Lake and Vancouver are tied. So there's still a possible outcome where uh, Ross Lake might lose to Vancouver. He may go with our team, and I think I have the same starting 11. Because, like I said, there was a big... Oh, no, never mind. Velarde, um, the Peruvian international, obviously, we just had two games with him. Uh, so I'm having him on the bench right now. We're going to go with with Michael Farfan. You know, I'm still pretty confident in this team. I mean, there's just one change, so it shouldn't be too much of a difference. Um, although, having Velarde on the team, we just managed to win 1-1 draw. So maybe that will come to bite me in the butt. Uh, towards the end of the game, who knows? And we see that Fabi has his game face on, and let's begin with the second leg of the MLS Cup quarterfinals. And Pontius is all by his lonesome. He goes, beats his defender, goes for Arieta. Arieta with the simple shot, and it's just wide. Again, alone. No one's marking him, and he can't seem to get it on frame. Now Kyle Range is going to put the ball, ball back in play. We have Cizo. Fancy footwork there. Cutting by my defenders. A shot is taken, but Bill Hemi just uh, uh, basically gets the ball. No worries. Here we go with Fabi. Fabi looks like he's off sides. Is he? No, he takes a shot. And just too much to one side to make any... Uh, to, to worry the goalkeeper there, Kyle Reinish. Reinish puts the ball back in play. And I think this is the last attack of the season. Of the season, excuse me. Of the half here. We have Sasha Kleshton. Sasha Kleshton with a shot. And Bill Hamid with a nice save there. One-handed save. Bill Hamid. If there's any position that I'm not worried about, guys, it's goalkeeper because we have Hamid, we have Gajese, and if anything, we have Dijkstra, who, if you guys seen this season, has come up big many times before. Here we go with a corner kick, and we kick it out, we take care of it, and that's the end of the first half, guys. The last uh, clutch save there by Bill Hamid. Had that gone in, uh, that would have been a demoralizing half for us. Because uh, obviously you don't want to let in a goal the first uh, the last minutes of the of the half because then you you go in with a low mentality you kind of want to keep it zero zero and and maybe start off well from the from the get go in the second half and we have here Franklin with a nice center ball and that's a goal a goal for Fabi Espindola our talisman our best striker gets on the board one zero for DC here at RFK Stadium two one overall. Beats his defender and puts it in the back of the net. And Hamid's happy there, and we just need to keep this lead, guys. We just need that 1 0 win, and that'll be enough. We can't afford to get scored on, we can't afford to tie anymore. So we're gonna have to go for the win. And here we see Vilches coming. Vilches was actually not present in the first first leg and a shot by Felipe that's easily saved by Bill Hamid there he's going to give the ball back uh, this is Red Bulls here in the last opportunity of the game Vilches the star player is trying to find open space there's no one there to help him out he goes for the pass back for Davis unfortunately there's not enough time for the counter attack to go about its way and we win 1-0 and we're going into the next round 
And who will we be facing? Let's see. Here we will. Oh, I guess we won't see it all. We'll be facing the Columbus crew, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.